It's been nine weeks since Natalie Holloway vanished without a trace. Since then, we've heard from family and friends about Natalie's warm and good-natured personality. Natalie Holloway was the eldest of two children, born to Dave and Elizabeth Beth Holloway in Memphis, Tennessee. Her parents separated in 1993, and Natalie, along with her younger brother Matthew, was raised by her mother. In 2000, Beth married George Jug Twitty, a prominent businessman from Alabama, and the family relocated to Mountain Brook. Natalie graduated with honors from Mountain Brook High School in May 2005, situated in a prosperous suburb of Birmingham. She was actively involved in various activities, including the National Honor Society and the school dance squad. Natalie had secured a full scholarship to the University of Alabama, where she intended to pursue a pre-med track. At the time of her disappearance, Dave Holloway worked as an insurance agent for State Farm in Meridian, Mississippi, and Beth Twitty was employed by the Mountain Brook School System. On May 26, 2005, Natalie Holloway, along with 124 other graduates from Mountain Brook High School, arrived in Aruba for an unofficial graduation trip. Accompanied by seven chaperones, the students engaged in what authorities described as wild partying and excessive drinking. Police Commissioner Gerald Dompig mentioned the students' disruptive behavior, noting Natalie's consistent heavy drinking throughout the trip. Natalie was last seen around 1.30 a.m. on May 30th, leaving Carlos and Charlie's, a bar and nightclub in Oranjestad. She left with Joran van der Sloot, a 17-year-old Dutch honors student living in Aruba, and his two friends, Deepak and Satish Kalpo. Despite her scheduled return flight that day, Natalie didn't show up. Her packed luggage and passport were found in her Holiday Inn room. Aruban authorities conducted extensive searches but were unable to locate her. In the video of Joran's 15th birthday, which was two years before Natalie disappeared, he is having a great time dancing with all the girls. He struck you as the type of kid who would hit on 10 women knowing that one would say yes, and the nine who said no, he didn't much care about. It's pretty clear that this is a guy who is not lacking in confidence. Okay, um, this poem is about some of the few memories I have from when I was still young. Yaron Vandersloot was a headstrong, free-willed young man who was accustomed to getting what he wanted. Following Natalie Holloway's missed flight, her mother and stepfather promptly flew to Aruba by private jet. Within four hours of arriving, they provided the Aruban police with the name and address of Joran van der Sloot, the person Natalie was last seen with. The information was reportedly obtained from the night manager at the Holiday Inn, who recognized van der Sloot on a videotape. On the 29th of May, they went to the casino at the Holiday Inn where they were staying. They were an all-inclusive package, which also included alcohol and all they could eat. And after a while, they had heard that the place to go was Carlos and Charlie's, where it's a lot of fun. Prior to going to Carlos and Charlie's, they had met Joran van der Sloot in the casino, at the casino table, and had invited him to come along. The Twitties, accompanied by a Reuben policeman, visited van der Sloot's home to search for Natalie. Van der Sloot initially denied knowing her name, but later claimed they dropped her off at her hotel after a visit to the California Lighthouse area. He said she fell as she exited the car and refused assistance, and he reported seeing her approached by a dark man in a black shirt. The search for Natalie began immediately, with hundreds of volunteers from Aruba and the United States joining rescue efforts. Aruban banks contributed funds, and the Aruban government granted thousands of civil servants time off to assist. Dutch Marines conducted shoreline searches, and Beth Twitty, Natalie's mother, was provided housing at the Holiday Inn and later at the Wyndham Hotel. Reports suggested that Natalie Holloway did not appear on nighttime surveillance footage of the hotel lobby. However, conflicting statements were made regarding the functionality of the cameras that night. According to a statement by Beth Twitty on April 19, 2006, the video cameras at the Holiday Inn were not operational on the night Holloway vanished. Twitty, in other statements and her book, indicated that they were working. 
Police Commissioner Jan van der Straten, the initial head of the investigation, mentioned that Holloway did not need to pass through the lobby to return to her room. The search for physical evidence was extensive, occasionally resulting in false leads. For instance, a potential blood sample from Deepak Kalpo's car was tested, but found not to be blood. The American law enforcement collaborated significantly with Aruban authorities from the early stages of the investigation with U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice stating constant contact and substantial resources being applied to support Aruban officials. In June 2005, Aruban police arrested Nick John and Abraham Jones, former security guards from the closed Allegro Hotel, on suspicion of murder and kidnapping. The reason for their arrests was not officially disclosed, but statements by Joran van der Sloot and the Kalpoi brothers may have played a role. Known for cruising hotels to pick up women, John and Jones were released on June 13th without charges. On June 9th, Joran van der Sloot and the Kalpo brothers were arrested on suspicion of kidnapping and murdering Natalie Holloway. Aruban law allows for arrests based on serious suspicion, with evidential burden increasing over time. The investigation initially focused on these three suspects, involving surveillance, wiretaps, and email monitoring. Pressure from Holloway's family led to premature detention. David Cruz, the spokesman for the Aruban Minister of Justice, falsely claimed on June 11th that Holloway was dead and her location was known. Cruz later retracted the statement, calling it a misinformation campaign. Police Commissioner Gerald Dompig alleged that one of the detained men admitted something bad happened to Holloway, leading police to the scene, but this was not confirmed by prosecution spokeswoman Vivian van der Biesen. In June, disc jockey Steve Gregory Crows was arrested based on information from one of the initial three detainees. On June 22nd, Joran van der Sloot's father, Paulus van der Sloot, was detained for questioning and arrested the same day. Both were released on June 26th. During this time, the detainees changed their stories, claiming van der Sloot and Holloway were dropped off at the Marriott Hotel Beach. Van der Sloot presented conflicting accounts, stating he left Holloway on the beach and later suggesting the Kalpoi brothers drove her off. The Kalpo brothers were released on July 4th, while Van der Sloot was detained for an additional 60 days. Following Natalie Holloway's disappearance, extensive search efforts, including draining a pond near the Aruba Racket Club, proved fruitless. Despite rewards offered, no conclusive evidence was found. In August 2005, the Calpo brothers and a new suspect, Freddy Arambatsis, were rearrested but later released. The FBI examined a piece of duct tape with blonde hair, but the hair did not belong to Holloway. In January 2006, Aruban authorities interviewed Holloway's classmates, and searches continued without success. Former lead investigator Gerald Dompig suggested Holloway may have died from alcohol drug poisoning, and her family denied drug use claims. Dave Holloway later published a book recounting the search. In 2006, new arrests were made, including Jeffrey Van Kromvoort, who was detained on suspicion of drug-related offenses related to Holloway's disappearance. However, he was released, and the case continued to involve various suspects. The Netherlands took over the investigation in September 2006. A book by Joran van der Sloot and reporter Zvezdana Vukojevic was published in April 2007 offering van der Sloot's perspective. A new search was launched at van der Sloot's residence in April 2007, but nothing significant was found. The Kalpoi family residence was also searched in May 2007. In 2007, van der Sloot and the Kalpo brothers were rearrested based on newly discovered evidence. However, the Kalpo brothers were released on November 30th, and van der Sloot was released without charges on December 7th, 2007, as there was no evidence linking him to a violent crime leading to Holloway's death. In 2010, van der Sloot contacted Holloway's family, offering information about her location and death for money. He was later charged with extortion and wire fraud in the U.S. Earlier this year, a desire to line his own pockets would even lead Joran to allegedly attempt to extort money from the Holloway family. According to a federal criminal complaint, van der Sloot allegedly sought $250,000 in exchange for information about where Holloway's body could be found and details of the circumstances of her death. Just last week, he was charged with extortion and wire fraud.
In 2010, van der Sloot was arrested in Peru for the murder of Stephanie Flores Ramirez. In 2023, he was extradited to the U.S. and confessed to killing Holloway, stating he disposed of her body in the ocean after a violent encounter. Tonight, nearly two decades after Natalie Holloway vanished during a school trip in Aruba, the suspect at the center of her case, Joran van der Sloot, confessing. Today, I can tell you with certainty that after 18 years, Natalie's case is solved. Joran van der Sloot is no longer the suspect in my daughter's murder. He is the killer. It's our special guest today. It's Hootie. Hootie Who Holloway. Hi, you know, sitting in the back, cruising over to my place. The beach was a blast. I had the best time. 